today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, as we look back on our lives, we begin to think of all the things that you've done for us and how you brought us through, Lord. It was only you, Lord, that brought us through, Lord. And Lord, as we stand here on today, we say thank you today, Lord. For God just came by today, Lord, and you're sending blessings all over the land today. Lord, we pray today, Lord, for all of those that are on the say, hey, 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 under the sound, come on and praise them today. Under the sound of my voice today, Lord. We're here today, Lord. Only because of your grace and your mercy today, Lord. We say thank you today, Lord. But Lord, we wouldn't forget those, Lord, that will come through the storm, Lord. We're praying for those, Lord, that were affected by the storm, Lord. Those in Rolling Fork today, Lord. Those in Silver City today, Lord. And all of the surrounding community today, Lord. 
We know, God, we, we, we pray for them today, Lord. We pray today, Lord, that you have mercy on them today, Lord. Look on the families today, Lord. The bereaved everywhere today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we know that you got all power in your hand, Lord. And we're just saying thank you today, Lord. For all of those, Lord, that may at this time, Lord, that are struggling, Lord, that are going through today, Lord. We want you to bless them today, Lord. Give them the strength to move on today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, there's nothing like you nowhere. And we're praying for the land today, Lord. We're praying for Greenville. We're praying for all of those cities that were affected today, Lord. The outlying areas of today, Lord. Our cold all of those cities today, Lord, that are in and around that area today, Lord, we pray for them today, Lord. Yes. And Lord God, we know that uh, you got all power in your hand, Lord, and we know that you haven't made a mistake. Yes. And we're saying thank you today, Lord. Oh God, you've been so good today, Lord. Look on us today, Lord. Look on our leaders today, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, stop by here today, Lord. Let your virtue flow today, Lord. In this house today, Lord. Move in a special way, Lord. We need you today, Lord. We need your help today, Lord. We need your strength today, Lord. Do it right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, somebody right now, Lord, is standing on the verge of a miracle. Somebody today, Lord, is ready to throw in a towel. But you, God, only you, God, you are the miracle worker today. Oh, God, bless today, Lord. Have mercy on today, Lord. For you say in your word, what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We're here today, Lord. We're looking on you today, Lord, that you are moving this series, that you are blessed everywhere, Lord. Look on the sick and the afflicted today, Lord. Those that are troubled in the mind today, Lord. Those that are troubled in the bodies. All types of diseases and, and, and pain today, Lord. We need you today, Lord. The work of miracle, do it today, Lord. Look on my neighbor today, Lord. Bless him in a special way, Lord. Look on this service today, Lord. Bless, Lord. Bless the speaker, Lord. Anoint him today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, look on every auxiliary. Look on this first lady today, Lord. Bless her in a special way. The choir today, the ushers today, Lord. The mothers today, Lord. The deacons today, Lord. Look on your family today, Lord. And bless and pour out your spirit on us, Lord. It's by your stripes that we are healed. See your healing power. See your nurturing today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And God, you've been so good to us. We want to thank you for the things that you've done and the thing we know you're yet going to do. The blood still works, Lord. Send it today, Lord. The blood-stained banner, hold it up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, as we pray these prayers, we're praying, Lord, for those that are across the land, Lord. Those that are listening near and far, Lord. Those that are listening by Facebook and Zoom and what other apparatus today, Lord. We ask that you will bless them today, Lord. Those that are even on their way, strengthen them, Lord, and take them on. Oh, God, without hurt, harm, and danger. And, Lord, God, we're going to be careful to give you the glory and all the honor and praise in this service. We pray, Lord, for your mercy and for your blessing. Touch us today, Lord. Move in a special way. Yes. And we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name, let us all say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Remain. Remain standing. Sister Green is going to read the word of the Lord for us this morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's coming from Psalms 95, verses 1 through 6. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto, the, with, unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great and the king of above all gods. In his name are deep places of the earth. The strength of his hill is also. The sea is his and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Last verse. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Amen. Let's say amen again. Oh, come on, let's give God a praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Can you hear me shout hallelujah? Come on and shout hallelujah. 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 Oh, we praise him and we magnify the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. We're so happy 
to be present on this Lord's day. Yes. Beautiful Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Amen. A great day to come and to give God the praises and the, the glory. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his tender mercies. We thank God for all that he has done for us. All right, the praise team is coming. Amen. With selections. And I want you to sing with them. Let's praise God together. Amen. Let's let the Lord know we appreciate what he has done for us. Amen. God bless. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. that God is just simply awesome. Amen. This is not a new song. You know the song, so come on, join us. Those of you who will, who came to praise and magnify the name of the Lord, stand to your feet and just help us sing this simple song. Even if you don't know it, it's easy to catch on. It's just say, Lord, you are awesome. No! 
How do you know that he's awesome? Oh, he's awesome. So you ought to praise and magnify the Lord. Somebody shout out, he's awesome. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We serve an awesome God. Yes, we do. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Give God a praise. Come on, since he's an awesome God, give him an awesome praise. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear God, again, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify your holy name. Indeed, Lord, as the praise team has told us, you are awesome. Thank you for keeping us in the mountains and in the valleys, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that when I'm hurting, you come to heal. You come to deliver. An awesome God you are. And I love you today, God. I love you because you first loved me. You sent your only begotten son to die on that cross. That today I have life. And can have it more abundantly. We praise you, O oh God. And we glorify you. We give you the honor. Lord, that you deserve. I pray now, God, as we stand before such a great people, give us words from heaven, words that will come to edify, to heal, and to save. Let your anointing rest upon your man's servant. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands again. And give God the praise. Give God the glory. God bless you. you may be seated. We thank God for being here this morning and we are honored amen once again to be in the house of the Lord amen we have been talking all morning um, throughout the services in Sunday school about the tragedy yeah. that has occurred in our state amen close by to where we reside we are praising God that he had mercy on Greenville but the hearts are broken by the news that we receive in terms of the devastation um, that is in Silver City and Rosa Fork and even going out East Mississippi. Amen. We pray for those families that have lost loved ones. We pray for others, oh God, that God would step in and would help to restore that these individuals can get their lives back together. Now, I want you to know that the valley is doing more than just praying. Praying is certainly the first thing you ought to do. It is vital. It is necessary. And it's what we're supposed to do. Come on, you all. As believers, we believe in the power of prayer. But we're doing more than praying. We've already collected some items. And hopefully this evening we're going to be taking these items to try to help in the relief effort. Yes. And uh, we, we're already discussing about... Um, possibly doing another trip on this week. We're going to yes. go to one of the cities, those that were hit the most. We're going to go to one today and um, hopefully later in the week we'll be able to go to the others. That's what the people of the Lord do when people are in need. And we have resources we can go and help. Amen? And we want to um, do uh, as much as we can to try to bring some relief to those who are suffering. May the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Uh, we give honor to the Elder Green and Sister Green on this morning. Say amen. amen. Bless Deacon Laws and his wife and these mothers and missionaries. Thank God for our first lady on today's Friday. And to all of God's people, to all of you that are here and you who are Listening by way of Zoom and Facebook. Yes. We're so happy to have you. While it's on my mind, be sure you continue to pray for Sister Ruth Henry. Yes. Perhaps she's listening to us. She's uh, in the hospital. Amen. And she's gone through quite a bit. Amen. But the Lord is blessing. And we're going to continue to pray that the Lord will bring her home soon. Because God is a healer. How do mean, you all know that God is a healer? Amen. Yes, he is a healer. And I thank God for even touching my body. I did not feel the very best on it yesterday. And so, oh Lord, I want you to touch because 
Got yeah, to go to church tomorrow. I yeah. want to be in church. Yes. Amen. The Lord bless me to get a good night of sleep. God. And over the night, he did just that he touched me. Thank and you, Lord. I am grateful for the hand touch of the Lord. Amen. I want you to get your Bibles uh, and let's go to the word the Lord found in Philippians uh, chapter 4. And we shall begin reading with verse 4. Philippians chapter 4. And verse 4. And after finding those verses, will you stand with us? Others of you would read. I think the technician would have it on the screen. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. And verse 4. It reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Yes. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Yes. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yes. Finally, brethren, yes. whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Notice that the last verse said, the God of peace, peace. shall be with you. And then I want you to focus on verse 7 again. And the peace of God, yes. which passes all understanding, should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want to share with you today from the subject, it says, the Lord wants you to have peace. Yes. You may be seated. Yes. The Lord wants you to have peace. peace. Amen. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Come on, everybody, say amen. amen. I want to share with you a, a little story uh, that I think will help to bring out this message. According to the Associated Press in June of 1997, an employee at a Massachusetts store, it's one of these uh, convenience stores, found a $20 bill on the washroom floor with a note folded inside. The note read, help, kidnap, kidnap. Let me say it again. Help, kidnap, call Highway Patrol. That was on one side. And on the other side, it listed two Oklahoma phone numbers. The notes also read, my Ford van, cream, Blue, Oklahoma was written on the second side. Now notice that the note, the note said, help. In other words, she, the person said, I'm kidnapped. Called the highway patrol. We gave two phone numbers. Gave a description of the van. Well, the police were notified. And they determined the names of the elderly couple registered at the phone numbers that were on that note. The names Floyd and Rita, Rita Rupp. They put out an all points bulletin. The media published photos and descriptions of the missing couple. The two daughters of the couple sat anxiously by their phones waiting for the news. Then there was a phone call at the office from Mr. Rupp, the man that was supposedly missing. He reported, I'm sitting here enjoying the view of the ocean. The office manager said, you have no idea what's going on, do you, Mr. Rook? And Mr. Rook certainly didn't know. And when he found out, he and his wife were quite embarrassed. It turned out his wife was so insecure and worried about driving alone back to Oklahoma that she had written a kidnap note, kept it in her purse, just in case she needed it. The note had accidentally fallen out of her purse in the store washroom 
that she had visited in Massachusetts. This is a true story, y'all. This woman was so worried about the trip until she had no peace in a time she was supposed to enjoy. She could not enjoy the scenery that she saw as she traveled on the road ways from a fear of being kidnapped. She had no peace. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen again. Amen. Then there's another story. This was quite much shorter about a man who worried whether he would die of cancer. Why was he so worried? He was worried because cancer was so prevalent in the society. He worried about it for 30 years. No peace. And guess what? He died of a heart attack as a result of being worried and no peace. The Lord wants you to have peace. I'm talking about a peace that will bring joy into your life. What type of joy? Joy just like a just like one of a little baby would have that's rested and fed and lying in her mother's arms. And the mom is looking down with love into those precious eyes and begins to talk to her son, evoking or causing a sudden smile. You see, the baby is at peace which causes a joy to come upon him. Well, in this epistle, because we read from the book of Philippians, in this epistle, Paul writes and speaks of such a joy that will bring about peace. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The concept of joy dominates this letter. In fact, this concept of rejoicing or joy appears 16 chapters in these four short chapters. Amen. Regardless of the circumstances, listen to this, believers can have profound contentment, serenity, and peace. Somebody say peace. Peace. This joy comes from knowing Christ personally. Oh, if you want joy, if you really want to have peace in your life, it's from knowing Jesus personally. What did I say? Personally. Not from hearing about him through your parents. Hearing about him through uh, the preacher. But I'm talking about actually getting to know Jesus. When you really get to know him on a personal level. Amen. You will begin to depend on his strength. You will begin to trust in his plans. Amen. Sometimes we don't quite understand what's going on. What the Lord may be doing in our lives and even around us. But I can have contentment. I can have joy. Because I know the Lord. I can have that joy and contentment because I'm dependent on him. I can have the assurance because the word of the Lord lets me know that even when things are not seem to so good around me, that I'm yet in the hand of God. As a matter of fact, the scripture let me know that I'm even the apple of his eye. He loves me. He cares about me. And all oh, to know Jesus is to know peace. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Come on again, say, Lord, have your way. The problem is most people in this world right now are discontent and are continually seeking meaning of life and trying to find peace. But all oh, again, True, lasting contentment can only come through knowing Jesus. And, with, and if you know Jesus, amen, that means sins are forgiven. Your future is secure. My sins are forgiven, so my future is secure. 
Meaning that whatever happens in this world, whatever happens in America, because we're living in a time of chaos, y'all. We're living in a time where things are shaking. But I don't have to be shaken by what's going on around me. I don't have to worry about whether they're going to arrest Mr. Trump or not and it calls as a folks to start rioting. I don't have to worry about the Chinese or the Russians sending balloons over here because my hope is in Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. They even speaking. I was looking at the headline. I didn't take time to read it. But they even speaking of another COVID virus coming. Dead scientists are talking about uh, there is some other uh, sickness that is probably on the way. You know, they make all kinds of Prediction. I think sometimes they make the prediction to take your peace. I think they try to, sometimes they try to shake us up to cause stress. Amen. But whatever comes our way, we can have peace in Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I say we can have peace in Jesus. You see, you can have joy and peace even in hardship. Yes. Amen. You can have peace, amen, and joy. Even when there are things that are all around us to steal our peace. And even to kill our joy. I've said this many other times before. That the devil, he's cunning. He's, he's intelligent. He's smart. You see, where he cannot get you to go into the streets to, to, to become an alcoholic or to take on drugs and other things that you know are wrong. He understands that you know that some things are sinful and there's some things that you probably won't try right off. So what does he do? He comes to steal your peace. He comes with hardships and situations. You need to understand that the attack that's on your home that is coming from a spiritual source. Y'all yes. come on, come on. Y'all say amen everybody. Amen. You, you need to know wives, hey amen, you want to call them a knucklehead husband. You need to know it's not the knucklehead husband, but it's the devil that's trying to steal your peace. Trying to get you all upset. Come on, y'all. He wants to steal your peace when your children are cutting up a clown in their school. Because what he's trying to do, he's trying to steal your joy. And in, in the midst of all the trials and stuff that's going on in life. I can't understand that, that, that when believers are going through storms, that's the very time, amen, look like they want to stay at home. It's a trick of the enemy because he knows that if you get to the house of the Lord and somebody starts singing and they're singing under the anointing, he knows that the, even the joyful sounds you hear in, your, in church will begin to lift your spirits. He doesn't want you to hear testimonies of deliverance. He doesn't want you to hear the word of the Lord that will build and stir up your faith. So he comes to steal your peace. He comes to kill your joy. But you need to know in those times I've got to keep my hand in the hand of God. I might have to cry just a little bit. I might have to weep in the night hour. But all oh, the word of the Lord is so that joy is coming in the morning. If I hold on, God will bring me out. Lift your hand and tell God thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. I want you to note again the scripture that we just read, particularly verse 7 that said, and the peace of God which passes all understanding should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. Well, if that scripture, I, I should have told the technician maybe to, to put that scripture back up. Amen. But you have your Bible, the peace of God, which passeth, passeth all understanding. That word passeth, or we would say pass in this time, comes from the Greek word, and you know the New Testament was written in Greek, comes from the Greek word, hyper echo. The first part of the word, hyper, literally means over, above, and beyond. 
in the pick something. I want y'all to stay with me in these illustrations and talking about some of these Greek words. It depicts something that is way beyond the measure and that is superior. The second part of this Greek word is echo. Help me say echo. Which means I have as someone who holds something in their possession. It can be translated to keep, to possess, to have, or even to acquire. Now, when you put these two Greek words together, which, which makes it a, count, a compound word, hupo echo, as Paul wrote in this text, it tells us of a peace. Listen to this. It tells us of a peace that is so superior that is held high above all other types of peace. Yeah. You see, the, the peace that God gives you, That's right. nobody else can give you. Right. The type of peace that God gives you, you can't get it from any other source. It is high. It is above. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, it's a peace that you can't get from nowhere else. It is a peace that trans that that transcends that outdoes the peace that God gives. It outdoes the peace that you think you can get in your house. It surpasses what you think you can get from your job. Come on, y'all. It excels friendships. Amen. It rises above everything else. It goes beyond and over. The top of anything is yes. the idea. Listen to this. The idea here is that people may try to find peace in other places, but there is no peace Amen. like the peace of God. Amen. You ought to clap your head and praise God for his peace. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you for your peace. Come on, tell him, Lord, I thank you for your peace. Now tell God, thank you. Come on and tell God, thank you. Yes, the peace of God completely outshines every other attempt to produce peace. There is nothing in this world that compares with the peace of God. Get a little warm in here. Y'all turn some fans on over there. Come on and say amen. amen. But I'm afraid that too many people, and some of you who are sitting in the sanctuary now, some of you who are listening to me by way of Facebook, too many of you are trying to find peace everywhere else rather than coming to Jesus. Some of you won't find peace in relationships. Help us say relationships. Relationship. You seek peace through friendships because you don't want to be by yourself and alone. And you're thinking, oh, I will have contentment, contentment and peace if I'm friends with certain people. And that's especially true among some of our younger people Amen. You think you got to hang with the popular folks at school. You, you got to be with uh, those that got the bling bling and, and, and everything else. Y'all say amen. amen. And if I could just be around certain people, if I could have a connection to certain individuals, I'll have peace. And then you find yourself running with the wrong folks, causing you to do things that you know that, that are not right. You still don't have any peace. Somebody say amen. Come on, say amen. Same idea is true. Amen of the relationship people have in the, the dating game. Some of the girls, amen, in this world would do certain things and almost anything she think to keep her boyfriend. Y'all might have quiet in here. Amen. Or to get a husband. I know of a situation where I was teaching where uh, the mama, I mean, she's fully grown, mom, daughter is dating the young man that supposedly has a promising future. You know, that he's going to be somebody. He's going to make plenty of money because of his athletic skills. I'm told that mama told the daughter, say, yeah, baby, go on and uh, get pregnant by him so you have an attachment. So you can hold on to him when he comes into the money. Amen. And this is what people think. They think that such things will, will bring peace. But you don't understand that when you go outside the will of God, there is no peace for the wicked. 
That's what the Bible says. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on and say amen. amen. People are looking for peace in the relationship. Amen. Through cliques they join. Groups. Social groups. Oh, I can take a little time talking about these social groups, but I won't do it right now. Amen. amen. Social groups. Groups that are promising that you're going to make it in society. Amen. But you hang in that group. Amen. And around the people. And I want you to think about it. Did it actually bring you contentment? Did it really bring you real peace? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Then there are people who seek peace through money. Let me say money. money. You think if I had more money, I would have peace. But in actuality, more money brings more trouble. More money bring more taxes. Amen. The IRS agent is looking for you. More money bring more bills. Y'all say amen. amen. The more money you make, the more you spend. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all might well say amen. amen. So the thought is, should I would have peace? Because if I, I, because if I had the money that I desire, I could pay all my bills. And have money to burn on some things that I don't need, but I, I won't because, see, you, you, you really don't need a, a big house. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. You really don't need a big house. Amen. You just need a roof over your head. Y'all yes. come on and say amen. Yes. If you don't need an expensive car, say amen. amen. And some of you all want to drive a Mercedes but you got a, a, a job that says you ought to have a Chevrolet. Y'all come on now. And, 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 and you can go, listen, you can go to most of, most of these car dealers and they will give you stuff on credit. Amen. And here you don't understand what they're doing when they're punching their calculator and adding all that interest, all that interest in there and, and, and saying how long. What they ask you is how much money you want to pay? How much money you want to pay monthly? You don't understand the trick. Amen. I don't go and tell them how much money I want to pay uh, monthly. I figured out what I want to pay and do my calculation at home because they can give you the monthly payment you want in most cases. They'll stretch it out from, from 24 months to 36 to 60 months, now 72 months, 84 months. Oh, they give you just about the deal you want. And then you find yourself all the way in a hole. Amen. Amen. The creditor's calling you. Looking at the call out there. I ain't going to answer this call. Amen. And when you refuse to answer the call and they keep calling, there is no peace. Say amen. amen. Come on. And so don't seek peace in material things. Don't seek peace in cars, land. Come on, you all. In jewelry. Y'all, somebody say amen. amen. We, we buy a lot of stuff that we don't need. Amen. You, you, don't, you don't need expensive clothes. Say amen. amen. I'm going to say it again. You don't need expensive clothes. The ones at Walmart will work out all, all, were pretty good. Y'all don't believe that, do you? But the ones at Walmart will last just as long as the other expensive stores. Amen. The had Walmart will work just as well as the 200 had do you trying to get. Y'all come on, say amen. Say amen, everybody. Amen. It's a shame that many of our young ladies, amen, now are just trying to uh, uh, dress her head up, pay $250 for the head, pay another $50 or $60 for some nails that the Chinese to put on. Amen. And don't have no money to pay the light bill. The water is getting cut off. The man you're paying rent to is threatening to throw you out. Say amen. amen. I think you'll do better in your house with lights and water on, be nabby headed, and no nails. 
and you have more peace. But we seek all of these things that we might have peace. Why don't you say amen? amen. Come on and say amen. amen. King Solomon had all the money he could have desired in his lifetime, but yet he stated in Ecclesiastes 2 and 17, I hated life. He had everything, y'all. He said, I hated life. Why do you think these celebrities and movie stars and wealthy people are constantly committing suicide? They have no peace. These are the people who buy socks that cost $600. Yeah, I, I said I the same thing. The devil is alive. When I was in Los Angeles about two years ago, we toured Hollywood. Passed by a store, and the tour guide said uh, it was a men clothing store. And she said that if you want to go in that store, you have to call for an apartment. You don't just walk in there. You call for the pump. She said the cheapest thing in the store are socks that cost six hundred dollars. I think some of the body paying socks that cost six hundred dollars that just about lost their mind. I'm looking for the ones on the five dollar rack. <laughs> Amen. When I go out of town, I find a, a good sale. I buy it over. I ain't, <laughs> ain't going to pay $600 for no suit. <laughs> Amen. 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 But yet, people have this money. And buy all of this stuff. And still have no peace. So new and expensive clothes won't bring you peace. New and dangerous entertainment won't bring you peace. I think some wrong people that want to climb Mount Everest. <laughs> and folk dying every every year because they say they want to get to the mountain peak. That's an indication of, of, of no peace. They're searching for something. What I need to why do I need to conquer Mount Everest? The Lord ain't never told me to conquer physical mountain. Now say amen. amen. New and dangerous entertainment. Out there surfing on, a, on, on them boards, surfing high tide on the coast. And folk drowning. And folk being bitten by sharks. It won't bring you any peace. Parachuting out of a plane won't bring peace. Driving a nail through your tongue won't bring peace. Pastor, folk driving nail. I saw on a talk show a man said that he had done so and had had, uh, had pictures. And he pulled out a hammer and said, I'll do it right now. And the host wouldn't let him do it. But he had driven a nail through his tongue. He's searching for something. Anybody that's doing it. But now, now, you say, Pastor, I would never do such thing. Drive a nail in my tongue. But some of you will get a tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get a body piercing. Something wrong with y'all too. Gonna take, gonna take needles. Be putting all this stuff on my skin. I gotta sit there and let him draw something on my skin. I don't even want to go to the doctor and get a shot. But you're gonna take a needle and, and you say you done sanitize. I don't know if you sanitize the needle or not. Or what about these body peers? Seeking for peace. Uh-oh. Y'all know we're going that way, didn't you? Y'all come on, say amen. You drink liquor and know it's causing the destruction of your liver. Why do you do it? 
You're looking for peace and contentment. Amen. You want to drink your problems away. Yeah. But brother or sister, when you come off that buzz, when you come down from being drunk, the trouble is yet there. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now, I talked about this in another message. You might not lick a toad frog as people do in Arizona. There's a particular toad frog in Arizona that has a secretion that if you lick the frog, it'll cause you to get high. And some of these folks, and, and, and listen, the secretion is powerful enough that it's killed some dogs. Dogs didn't know what they were doing, but God has given you more intelligence than a dog. Why would folks stoop down to lick a frog? Because they know it's going to cause them to get high. Well, you might not lick a frog, but you'll smoke marijuana. <laughs> to try to get the same feeling. Go from marijuana to crack. Go from marijuana to meth. Come on. And this stuff is killing folks. It's destroying families. It's, it's, it's destroying lives. But people do it to find peace. Folks smoking cigarettes for the sensation of nicotine. Dr. Ted is going to kill you. You do it because you think you need peace. Yeah. Or what about the folk that's taking somebody else's husband? You do it because you believe it'll bring you some security and peace. Women like to feel secure. Security helps to promote peace. You say it's a shortage of men. And time he looked your way smile at you. And you know he's married. But your object is to take him because I'm also secured. Say amen. amen. And then others are engaged in all types of sexual activities. One night stands. Friends with benefits. And some other degraded stuff I won't talk about. Because you're looking for something you don't have. King Solomon had 1,000 women. And he still was not happy. He still had no peace. I just told you what he said in Ecclesiastes 2 and 17. I hated life. He had all the women, all the money. Matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes 2, he said, I got men serving. I got women serving. He said, I got folk that, that are singing for me. He said, I got vine yards and orchids. I, I, I got everything beautiful, everything that my heart desired. But yet, he hated life. He had no peace. Can I go a little bit further? Are you listening to me here? And when you get to that particular uh, time in your life, you try everything else. You've gone from here to there, and there's yet no peace. The devil will tell you, you might well just go in your life. You'll be better off if you were gone. Nobody will miss you. He talks to you. And I, I don't have this in my notes, so the Lord must be speaking to somebody right now. He talks to you. And have you imagining how you're going to die? What you will use to end your life? Because you have no peace. But the Lord Jesus wants you to have peace. Somebody hear me say peace. Things would be so much better if you would come to Jesus. 
Verse 7 again said, The peace of God which passes all on the sand shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There is a peace that passes or surpasses and excels and it is above all my understanding. I don't know how God does it. I don't know how God brings me out. I don't know how God supplies my need. But I know that if I keep my hand in the hand of God, everything will be good. Why don't you tell him thank you? Come on and tell him thank you. In that scripture, I'm going to move on a little quicker here. In that scripture, the word understand it comes from another Greek word, which is also used for our mind. The word refers to the ability to think, to reason, to understand and comprehend. It depicts the mind as the source of all human emotions. And then Paul talks about the heart and mind. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind. He talks about your hearts and mind. This, this peace, have me say peace. Passing all understanding. It passes our understanding and mind because it is so wonderful that it keeps our hearts and minds. And in that portion of the scripture when it talks about your hearts and minds, it is actually speaking of your soul. Because the soul is the place of your emotions. Come on and say amen. Come on, everybody, say amen. Notice the scripture says, says, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Well, we focus on the word keep in this verse. Amen. The word keep comes from a Greek word, if I'm pronouncing it right, Ferrero, which is a military term. I want y'all to listen to this. It is a military term that expresses the ideal of soldiers who stood faithfully at their post to guard and control all that went in and all that will go out of the city. This word, amen, keep Ha. Amen. Comes from the Greek word. It's telling us ha, that it is that it served as monitors or soldiers. Ha. Amen. That's watching the gate. Ha. That's not going to let anything in or out ha, without their approval. Ha. So this word Ferrero, ha, which is for the English word keep, ha, tells me that if we allow God. Ha, to do what he wants to do. Ha, God's peace ha, will stand at the gate of my heart. Ha, God's peace ha, will stand at the gate of my mind. Ha, and I told you that is your soul. Ha, that is the place of your emotions. Ha, so God's peace ha, will act like a God. Ha, to control and monitor ha, everything that's trying to enter my heart, ha, everything that's trying to enter my mind, ha, everything that's trying to cause my emotions ha, to come out of whack. Ha, some of us need emotional healing. Ha, you hear me praying from time, Lord, ha, heal my mind, ha, heal my emotions. Emotional beer. Why don't you tell God thank you? If I let it keep my mind and my heart, that's the reason I don't have to fall apart. I don't have to go crazy when I get bad news. I know that when you receive bad news, yes, it may bring tears, it may shake you for a moment, but when I realize who I am and when I realize who my father I yet can have peace I'm talking about peace that passes all understanding peace that will keep my heart and mind I'm talking about peace that will help me through the midnight hour that will help me through a nightmare that will help me 
in a time of storm. I can have peace in the midst of the storm. I don't have to be overcome in emotional wreck when there's trouble in my family. Why don't you tell him thank you? I'm the preacher. But trouble comes to my family like anybody else's family. But I'm so glad that in my family that there's some prayer warriors. I'm not saying it's not in your family too. But I'm trying to give you an example. There's some prayer warriors that are in my family. I'm glad that every night at 830, Almost 20 of us, sometimes 15 to 20 persons at some time, would gather in the time of prayer. Before the prayer begins, they tell them, pray for your cousin, pray for your aunt, pray for members of our churches. One of my cousins told us to pray for the pastor who had been in a wreck and his son had gotten, was also injured in that wreck of the cancer. We prayed for pastor and the son. And a few days we asked, how is the pastor? And the report was, the pastor is doing good. The son is doing good. Oh, when, when? You had your hand in the hand of God. He will give you peace. In the time of crisis, peace. When the when the storms are raging, peace. When the doctors have told you something is wrong in your body, come on and tell it. Thank you. Come on and tell it. Thank you. I don't have to be overcome. I don't have to have an anxiety attack. I don't have to have my blood pressure rising when trouble comes my way. I don't have to be emotional and make mistakes. That's what the devil really wants. He's throwing bullets your way. He's shooting fire and dots your way. Because he wants you to become emotional and even make mistakes. But devil, you are a lie. My hand is in the hand of God. And he told me there is peace that passes all understanding. He told me that I can have peace that will keep my heart and my mind. I'm not going to become emotional and go to work and start snapping at my co-worker. I'm not going to be in a place where I'm going to give my family members a piece of my mind. I'm not going to lose control and be ready to fight when people are digging ditches for me to fall in. I can have peace and know the folks next in the next room are talking about me. I can have peace when my cousin June won't speak to me no more. The Lord wants you to have peace. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and tell him the Lord wants you to have peace. Peace that's like a steel river. Peace like a sunshine day. Peace like the baby that's wrapped up in your arm and smiling at you. The Lord wants you to have peace. And He wants you to have so much peace. He wants to have this peace until the Lord Jesus came into the world and died on the cross for the man Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 53 and 5 but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity 
opportunities. The chastisement. Listen to this. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are here. Look at what Isaiah said. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The word chastisement means to be disciplined. So Jesus, listen to me before Jesus was beaten for our peace. They hit him and smacked him in his face. Somebody probably hit him with their feet, their fists. He his face was even disfigured, but he took the bruises, he took the beating, amen, for our peace, the chest high with our peace was upon him, and I realize you Bible scholars, this beating and this death was done so that we could be reconciled back to God, meaning that Jesus did so, that we could have peace with God, so that our sins could be forgiven, but yet because he died, Yet because he was chest tied, yet because he was beaten, it means that not only can I have peace with God in the beginning of my sins, it also means that I can have peace in every aspect of my life because Jesus came and died and rose again. I I can have peace because he's my deliverer. Peace because he's my healer. I can have peace because he's my way maker. He's my big brother. He's my friend. He's my joy. And yes, he's my peace. I'm glad for Jesus. I'm glad that he died for me. I'm glad that he took the stripes. He took it for me because of the stripes. I am healed. I'm healed in my mind. I'm healed in my emotional being. Because of this stripes, I can have peace in a crazy world. Peace where everything is topsy-turvy. Peace when there are family problems. When there are financial problems. Thank God for peace. Thank God for peace. Lift your hand and tell him thank you. Come on, everybody, tell him thank you. Peace in the midst of the storm. Because Jesus is on my ship. Jesus is in my home. The older saints you to sing the song. You better take the Lord along with you. Everywhere you go, you're going to need him. Everywhere you go. I remember in St. Mark chapter 4, when the disciples got on the ship that eaten, they took Jesus on the that ship. As a matter of fact, Jesus had been preaching all day. They were concerned about Jesus' health. They were concerned about Jesus getting rest. So the disciples sent the multitude away and got on the ship. And when they got on that ship, on in the night, a storm arose. Everybody got shaken. Everybody got scared. Because they thought they were about to go under. But well, where was Jesus? He was in the hinder part of the ship. He was below deck asleep on the pillar. And finally somebody said, wake Jesus up. They awakened Jesus and said, Jesus, do you care that we perish? Do you care that we're about to die? 
I want y'all to know that Jesus, he cares about you. Jesus is concerned about your situation. Help me shout the end. Jesus got up and rebuked the storm. He rebuked the storm and said, peace, be still. And the Lord is here today, ready to speak into your storm. Peace, be still, shout your Clap your hands and tell it, thank you. Come on, everybody, tell it, thank you. Come on, stand with me. Come on, everybody, stand with me. The Lord wants you to have peace. Did you hear what I said? He's concerned about you. He's concerned about the burdens you're carrying. The trouble that's in your life. The nightmares you are experiencing. I hear the Lord saying now, why don't you try me? You've tried everything else. But you really have not tried me. Matter of fact, the Lord said, you, you, you come to the altar for prayer. Yeah, you come down here. But did you really turn it over to Jesus? Did you really put it into his hands? But that's some, um, the Lord is saying now, if you really want peace, the first step you got to do, you got to give up your life, you got to give up your ways. You got to let me come in into your heart, into your soul, to settle things out. The Bible said, no peace to the weak. And the scripture goes on to talk about uh, that the weak are like the waves that are being tossed backwards and forwards. If you look at a lot of water, especially when the wind is blowing rigorously, the waves are just going all kind of ways. The waves, they're just moving. But he wants you to be like a still river where there's a calmness and there is serenity. And there's peace of them in that river where a deer will come and take a drink. The lamb, the sheep, would take a drink because those animals, when the waters are rough, going back and forth, they won't go to such a, a river or a lake. Jesus wants you to have peace. Why continue going the way you're going? Somebody say, man. I say, why continue? Stop faking. Like you're so happy when you know you're crying. You're all alone. Your tears are just coming out of your face. You're weeping. You're crying. Stop trying to fool others and trying to fool yourself that you get it all together. Because some of you don't. And the reason you don't is because you won't let the Prince of Peace come into your life. And there's some of you who are saved. And you know that you're saved. But the devil has been working against your peace. He's trying his best to steal your joy. You perhaps are like those disciples on that boat. For a moment they didn't have peace. They thought they were about to die. They, be they, they became frantic. But they didn't have enough sense to go to Jesus. And Jesus got up and rebuked the storm. And everything was settled. I'm not going to be much longer. I preached. I tried to do. I tried to give what God gave me. Amen. But it's up to you. This peace that I speak of, that I speak of today, the Lord wants to give it to you. God gave me this message. I, I, I had a whole other message prepared. Oh, another message already. My notes typed up to everybody. And uh, Friday, I couldn't rest. I started reading. I got up early Saturday morning. The Lord started speaking to me. He said, well, this is what God wants me to preach today. He knew exactly who would be here. 
he knew the people that need to hear this message today. If you don't have that peace that I speak of and things of toxic turvy in your life, I want you to come to the altar right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. You don't need to be ashamed. Don't wait on and look around and see who else is coming. I'm going to the altar because I need help. I, I need the Lord to do something for me. I need the Lord to settle some issues, settle some things in my life. If you're not saved, you ought to come likewise. And this altar call is for whosoever will come, whether you're saved or you're not. But if you're not saved, you ought to come. Because the Lord knows that I need peace. It does not matter who you are. We know God is not a respect the person, but the devil shows another time. And he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He has come to destroy you. But you can have peace, peace of mind, peace that flow like a river. I want to pray. I want to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me tell him thank you. Hallelujah. To my young people, y'all listen to me. The Lord want to give y'all peace too. Hallelujah. Because children have issues and troubles like any of them. Maybe on a different level. Some of you young folks are trouble. Some of y'all are trouble in mind. And the Lord wants to do something for you. He's here to help you. He's here to deliver you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Anybody want to be saved today? Anybody want to be saved? Hallelujah. Anybody? You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed at all. The Lord will save you. Doesn't matter what age you are. I'm so glad God saved me when I was young. It helped me out. Kept me out of a lot of trouble. Amen. Kept me from getting into some stuff. Amen. Some of my classmates are suffering from some decisions they made when we were younger. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. But I'm glad God saved me when I was young. All right, we're gonna pray. That's great. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for what you have done. God, I thank you for these individuals who are at the altar right now. You know every one of them, God. You know where they've been. You know what they have seen. For some of the children that are in this church, whether they're on the altar or they're at their seats, have seen things, heard things that they wish not to even talk about or even to think about. It has been traumatic. But God, I pray now for peace. I pray that you touch the hearts of these children that are in this church. Help them now, God. I'm praying because this is the way God gave me to pray. Help them now, Lord. Lay your hands on these children. In the name of Jesus. Bind the devil. Yes. Hey, bind him, Lord. Yes. Comes to the sea. Yes. He's alive. Bind him, Lord. Yes. He's been speaking to somebody in here now. Yes, that demon of depression. That demon of suicide. Yes. Bind him, Lord. Yes. Hey, bind him, Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. God, give a release in this place now. Lord, give a release in this place right now. Hey, hallelujah. 
Do it now, God. Even as we pray. Let a change take place. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you want to give peace. You are the prince of peace. Lay your hand on them now. Come on, say, Lord Jesus. Lay your hand on me. Come on, tell it again, Lord Jesus. Lay your hand on me. I need a touch from God. Touch me now. Jesus, touch. Jesus, touch. As I lay hands on them, God, touch. Hey, I'm a higher. He's a higher. Touch us now, God. I pray, God, that you would touch. I pray for peace, Lord. I pray for a release here. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. But the enemy is a lie. He's a deceiver. You've been good to her, Lord. You have blessed her to come to this point. God, let your healing virgin go forth. Heal, Lord. Touch the mind here, Lord. In the name of Jesus. You're able, Lord. Somebody say, you're able. You're able. I know you can, God. You're able to fix it, Lord. You're able to deliver. Be my higher. Deliver, Lord. Let your deliverance come here. Hey, hallelujah. Deliver, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't let her suffer, God. Don't let her continue to suffer, Lord. The thing that she didn't even have control of. Some things that have happened, oh God. You know all I'm God. Yeah, I'm a higher. Yeah, I'm a higher. Do it for God. Do it for God. Let her look forward. Let her look forward. Let her look to you, God. Let her look to better day. Brighter day. You already have blessed. You already have done wonders. But the devil's trying to steal the joy. You want to bring some stuff back up. But devil, you're alive. Victory belongs. Victory belongs her now. I'm higher. Thank you for what you already done. Thank you for what you're doing right now. Yeah! Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. Help but understand that God, you will heal everywhere it hurts. Give up understanding. And Lord, is crying out to you that you will forgive. That you will deliver. Deliver her, Lord. Deliver her, Lord. Deliver, Lord. I come against everything that the devil is trying to do. I come against everything. In the name of Jesus, strongholds are being pulled out. Yama Mahaya. Yama Mahaya. Strongholds are being pulled out. Habits are being broken. In the name of Jesus. Come on, tell him thank you for deliverance. Thank you for deliverance. Everybody tell him thank you. Everybody tell him thank you. Everybody tell him thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, God. We need you, God. We need your peace. Peace. Yes, Lord. Peace that flow down the river. Touch us now, God. On this altar. Lord, whatever the case may be. Whatever the situation is. God, I want you to leave. I want you to allow her to leave this altar. Going back to a seat. Another way. Yes, Lord. And you got to believe when I just pray. You got to believe. I'm going back to my seat another way. I'm going back to Lily. I'm going back with my peace. I'm going back with my joy. Hallelujah. You got that shepherd. Huh? Lord, I thank you. Somebody said it, thank you. Somebody said it, thank you. You've been good, Lord. You've been good to this young lady. Lord, you have touched her. And I see what you're doing. I know you're working it out. I know you have blessed the Lord. But oh, Lord, the devil's going to be who he is. Find him, Lord. Find him, Lord. And help this young lady. Help her, Lord, to go higher in you. Help her, Lord, to go on this walk with you. Find the devil that seeks to destroy. Find the devil who wants to depress her. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I want you to do something.
I want you to lift both of those hands. Hallelujah. I want you to lean on your sister. Move them because I want you to do something. The joy of the Lord is real. You know God has done something. Yes, Lord. I know He has to receive it. Hallelujah. The Lord just gave to me to tell you to rejoice. The book of Philippians talks about joy. It talks about rejoicing. Yes, God. And being glad. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to thank God and give Him your best praise yes, for what He has done. You know He's done something. Yes, yes. Do it. Yes. God is going to do something for you. Yes, He's going to do something for you in terms of your peace. Yes. I won't say that. I want y'all to rejoice. I want y'all to help. Come on, do it. Come on, do it. Come on. Let it come on now. Let it come. Let it come. Let it I thank you for what she's doing. Lord, how she's coming along. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in her life. Lord, whatever reason, she came to the altar. Grant the peace. Grant the joy that's needed on inside. 
at the altar, Lord. We can come and give all to you. Bless the Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless these children and touch them, God, as they grow up. Keep them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Why don't somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, we love you. We love your name. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessing. Oh, God. Let your blessings flow here. Oh, God. Lay your hand on the mouth. Your hand to the liver. Look on these young ladies. Touch every one of them. Help them, Lord. That they will look to you. Help them, Lord. That they will cry out to you. And ask you for help. In the name of Jesus. I pray your blessings upon them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I lay hands on this daughter, the mother of God, that has been quite sick, sick in the hospital. I lay hands on the daughter that you will heal the mother. Let it be so, God, that you will show her how good and how great of a God you are. Let the mother come home and let her do well and bless, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let the daughter be able to tell us that mama has come home. I believe you do it, God. Because I pray this good. I believe you fit. In the name of Jesus. Can I talk to y'all this? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Y'all pray. Every day. I want to challenge y'all to do something. It does not matter. Yeah. It'll have to be a prayer that I pray for you to make you here. But every day, for five minutes, I want y'all to talk to God. I want you to get by yourself. Alright? If you can't, you get by yourself. I want y'all to talk to God. Just tell me help. You have to have a big word to tell me help. He knows what you do. You Alright? I see y'all be I want y'all to tell me Alright? Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Hallelujah. How do you feel? Do you feel like something has happened? Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, child. Something. I need you to put it on the table. You know what I'm It's Miss Dan Wayne. It's our man. I want you to hug. Oh, for you to work. I want you to work. Tell them the Lord has delivered me. Now, you already got to get saved. I know that. But whatever you want to do, I want you to tell them the Lord has delivered me. And I thank God for your delivery. That's what God did to you. The Lord has delivered me. Praise God. Y'all praise God. Y'all praise God. Y'all praise God. The Lord know why he told me. He gave it to me to tell him to do that. Sometimes God moves in unusual ways. And God is doing something right now. I said the Lord is doing something right now. And if you will help them to praise God, God will touch you too. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We all clap your hands. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise here. Glory.
Clap those hands and get in the God for his goodness his blessings right now alright we get ready to dismiss amen let's proceed our offering and of course you can give electronically you can give electronically or you can give uh, the traditional way now let me make an appeal here right quick uh, we have already spend some funds uh, on the relief package that we are taking. Some of, some of you have given or bought some things. We got it back in the fellowship hall. Thank you for what you've done. But if you have not done so, here's your opportunity to be a blessing. Here's your opportunity to be a blessing. I'm, I'm going to share a, a, a hundred dollars because I told them to spend a certain amount yesterday. So I'm, I'll give a hundred of that. So I'm sharing a hundred dollars um, for this relief effort. If you want to share for the relief effort, put that on the envelope. Or if you're doing uh, electronic giving, you can say relief, and they'll understand where it needs to go. Do that for us, Amen. We want to share with those individuals. Um, I, I determined this morning that we probably have to make another trip. We're going to one of the hardest hit areas today. And we're going to go to the other way, perhaps a little later in the week. So let's do what we can do to help. Because if we were in that shape, we would need help now. Amen. Am I right about that? Amen. Can you imagine a storm coming and just completely destroying your house? You got cars, but the cars are destroyed. So I mean, you kind of stuck there until somebody comes in and rescue you. And even if your car was running, you still have to wait until they clear the road to try to get out of here. So we want to be of assistance and help. So do that for me. Let's pray uh, the blessing of offering in uh, first, rather, and then we'll get it. Come on, stand. Everybody stand, whether you have an offering or not. Dear God, we thank you for this time of giving. I pray, God, that you bless every giver. Bless them, oh God, regardless of the amount they're giving. Help them, oh God. Uh, to understand that you are the one who has blessed. You are the one that blesses. And if we give, we will be blessed. Thank you for what you already done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. The uh, parishes are coming down the center out uh, to receive those that are traditionally given. Sister Ralph. Now, we haven't dismissed yet, y'all. <laughs> the young people thought that that was dismissed. This is the offering of praying and prayer. Y'all need to listen to the prayer. Praying the blessed on the offering. They're still coming. Sister Ralph, I need you to come in, please. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe see you. Be seated for just a few minutes. Go ahead and announce with them. We're going to dismiss. The announcer is coming. The announcer is coming. And we're going to dismiss in just a few minutes. Just a couple more minutes. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Announcements. Every Wednesday, we have prayer and Bible study at 5.30 p.m. Every Thursday morning, we have prayer at 6.30 a.m. Next Sunday at 5 o'clock, we have district fellowship meeting at Grace United Methodist Church here in Greenville, Mississippi. This is the building that Pastor, F, Pastor Foster and the United Church of God in Christ. Unity. Is. I may remember. He spoke unity. Okay. All right. So next Sunday at 5 o'clock, district fellowship meeting will be at Grace United Methodist Church 
here in Greenville, Mississippi. This is the building that Pastor Foster and the Unity Church of God of Christ is currently uh, worshiping in. Also, Sister Riley wanted me to let you all know that the women's uh, book study will be today at 1.30. At Resurrection Day practice will be Wednesday and Thursday at, starting at 5.30. Praise dance practice will be this Wednesday and Thursday at 7 o'clock. And if you, if you have not paid for your book, you can put your money in an envelope and mark it book. You still have time to make, the, uh, make donations to the storm survivors. We will make our first load today. Thank you. Say amen. amen. Next Sunday, which is the first Sunday, April uh, District Fellowship Meeting. Superintendent is expecting us to come. We've had some good meetings. The last one you remember was here. It, it just got combined with the revival. And um, it's going to be a great United Methodist Church. That's on Carter Rock, the church that's in front of Bowen School. That's the building that Elder Foster and his congregation are currently worshiping. So, that, so we're going to that particular location for the next fellowship. Five o'clock next. Uh, Sunday. All right. That being all, we stand together. We're standing together. I want to ask of you continue to give on with the building fund. Continue to do so. Also, let's try to do a little bit better by being here for prayer. Prayer is really needed. Amen. All right. I had something else that he talked about, but the. Uh, Time is for a so I, I do it later. Dear God, we thank you and we praise you. We magnify your name. I pray, God, that as we get ready to go to our homes, our separate homes, Lord, that you would take us there safely and bring us back at that point in time. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of y'all get out of here so quick. Y'all want to shake pastor's hands sometimes.